What's going on guys? We're here back again with another exciting video, another brand new video. Guys, if you didn't know, you have a chance to win a $250 shopping spree on our website, lulusbodyjuice.com. All you gotta do is join our exclusive content by clicking the top of the link in the description section below right now. And the winner will be announced May 20th at 7 p.m. That winner could be you. So go do that right now. Click the link in the description section below and sign up. Other than that, yo, we have an exciting video for you guys. Let's get it going. Let's get it popping. Let's get it started. What is up, guys? Today, I'll be naming all the piercings on the ear and I have a special model to do so all the way from Paris Fashion Week, Milan Fashion Week, featured on GQ, featured on Elle Magazine, Harper's Bazaar. He is the great, the extraordinary, uh, dun -dun -dun -dun. you know, models and such, they're always like late to the stuff like this because, you know, they're important. Yes. Go and have a seat. Thank you so much for coming today. I appreciate it. Glad lending, to be here. You're lending us your ear for this video. It's very important. Uh, he is a professionally ear model um, all the way from Europe because he's all over Europe, you know? Let's begin. All right, so we're gonna start with the bottom and I'm gonna work my way around this complicated body part called the ear. So from the very bottom, we have the earlobe piercing. It's the very first hole. It's the one most of the people in the world have. It's the most common piercing in the world. Second one, this entire area right here, right before it reaches a little bit of cartilage or right before it reaches is this little hump here or this dip. It's called the upper lobe. It's also referred to as your seconds or your thirds if you have the space. A lot of times people come in and they're always confused about like, can I get my thirds pierced? Is there enough room? You guys don't understand that we can pierce as much as we can up until we reach some cartilage. So all the way until this dip is pretty much considered your earlobe piercing. All this is an upper lobe and then earlobe is your first basic one. So this is lobe, all cartilage, okay? Next thing right above here is all this big thick cartilage area. This this little mountainous region, this, this little cartilage thing right here. This is called a anti-tragus piercing. The anti-tragus area is located right underneath the regular tragus. Tragus, anti-tragus. The anti-tragus is a lot thicker than the tragus. It's a lot more bubbly too. Piercing this is kind of complicated and not my favorite whatsoever because it takes such a, such a, such a long time to heal. So if you're planning on getting this piercing, think really, really hard about it because it does take an incredibly long time. Next up is your traditional tragus piercing. Located right over here, pretty much where you slip your earbuds, this little area right here, tickles, doesn't it? <laughs> so this tragus area right here, it's almost like a triangular kind of thing. Whenever you're piercing this, you don't want to go too close to the edge because if you do, a lot of times it can reject out of your body and that's obviously not what you want to do with your piercing. You want to make sure it stays put. Go ahead and open your mouth really wide for me. You notice this line that gets created as soon as you did that? You definitely don't want to pierce on this line. You don't want to go past this. Put your tongue back in your mouth, sir. Thank you so much. You pretty much want to pierce in the center of the edge of the tragus and this line over here because that's a safe bet. That's like the flat area. That's where your piercing is gonna hold and be functioning at the best part of the tragus. Next is gonna be your date piercing. Your date piercing is pierced through this ear part of the ear over here. Uh, you definitely wanna go as deep in as you can, but not obviously inside the ear canal, but right up where the edge of this ear is because when you pierce through the date and you get a nice good grip on it, it creates that pressure point, it creates that nice like hold it needs to so it doesn't reject out of your body. I've seen many piercings done on the very edge over here and as you can guess, it just rejects out of the body. So when you're doing your date piercing, you definitely wanna get a good grip on this area so you can put a nice ring in there. That's all for your piercer to know. But when you get it, obviously you wanna check the mirror and make sure it's done properly too. So that's a little heads up for you guys. Right above the date is your rook piercing. It's this flat bed right here. This flat part of the ear over here. It's almost like a flap. You can kind of like push up on it too to kind of flatten it out. You can also do this. It's almost like a bed. You definitely wanna pierce from the top up here and exit out the bottom here. The rook is not on this flat part over here or on this ridge. You definitely do not want to pierce on that. There's way too much cartilage. Your ear will swell up like a balloon. I've seen tremendous rejection when people, when piercers decide to pierce on this part of the ear. That also comes from inexperience or just not knowing how to do a piercing. Stay away from piercers that don't know where the anatomy of the rook is. That's what I'm trying to say. Next up is your forward helix. Your forward helix is right about in this area over here. It's this flat like lip area right along here. When you do this piercing, you want to make sure you're either getting it underneath your rook section or above the rook section. If you do pierce on the rook section itself, the backing of it's gonna rest on here and it's never gonna lay flat. It's always gonna be tilted up or down. I personally like don't like to do more than two unless I absolutely have room. In his case, I could definitely go one under here very comfortably and I could go one above because there's space under here and there's space under here. You definitely want a little bit of space inside here and inside here to have 
the backing uh, or the posts stay or live in that area. Next is your industrial. Your industrial is a bar that goes across this lip here and this lip here. This is a very tricky piercing. I'll do an entire anatomy and like do's and don'ts separately on this, but just know your industrial is a piercing that goes right across your ear. Some even call it a scaffolding, but it's super rare terminology that not too many people use. Just go with industrial. It's the, more, it's the most commonly used term for this piercing. Next would be your flat piercing. The flat piercing is anything on the flat part of the ear here. It's a misconception that the, the flat and the helix are the same thing. Big, big difference. The helix is on the rim of the ear, on the outside part of the ear. The flat is just this flat area right over here, past the rook and then right before the helix. This is gonna be your flat piercing. Anything on the outside edge of the ear here would be considered your helix piercing. Not a cartilage, a lot of people call it a cartilage. This entire thing here is made of cartilage. The name of the piercing is a helix. What the ear is made up of is called cartilage. Next we have the snug piercing. The snug piercing is a, a jewelry that goes through here and exits out through here. Can I have my toothbrush? I have a magic trick. <laughs> wow. I'm also a part-time magician. Damn, one of my hobbies. son. So this is a snug piercing. It enters through here and comes out of here. They usually put a curved barbell or straight barbell, depending on your piercer's preference. That's what a snug piercing is. Next, and I believe it's the final piercing, would be the conch, which goes right through this part of the ear. It just goes right through the middle part of the ear. A lot of people call this an orbital, especially if there's a ring in there. Definitely not an orbital. The difference between a conch and an orbital. The conch is a piercing that goes straight across the ear, and you can either wear a stud or wear a ring. An orbital is two holes connected by a ring. So conch is a single with a ring around it. An orbital is two piercings connected by a ring. Got it? That is the anatomy of the ear. Thank you, sir, for joining me today and allowing your ear for this modeling purpose. If you wanna go ahead and um, finish this video off for me, I think it'd be a great joy to the audience watching. Make sure to subscribe below, turn on post notifications, and the bell icon be notified every single time we post. And of course, give this video a big thumbs up and drop a comment below of something you learned today. We'll see you back here on another video. Peace. Peace. Back to modeling. Wait, wait, I got you guys, watch. Or? Ow. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, $250 shopping fee. All you gotta do is sign up to our exclusive content by clicking the link in the description section below. Winner gets announced soon, May 20th. You continue watching the fun by clicking right on your screen, so go and click that video, and we'll see you there. Remember, I'm gonna call you too, so pick it up.